Annyeong hasayo everybody! Today, we're going to be getting our hands into some delicious kimchi. Welcome back to the channel, people. So good to see you here again. My name is Benji. And I'm Michelle. And we're just two regular home cooks who like to share recipes of the things that we like to cook and bake. Today, we're following a recipe by Mangji, one of our favorite Korean home cooks on YouTube. We'll put a link to her YouTube channel in the description below. Now, there are some ingredients that we don't get so easily here, so we've Malaysianized them. If you don't have what we use, I'm sure you can find a replacement wherever you are. This kimchi is great as a side dish, but it's also fabulous in a variety of dishes like kimchi jjigae or bude jjigae. We'll be doing some of those dishes as well in the future, so stay tuned. So without further ado, palikaja! As per usual, the list of ingredients and the recipe steps are all listed in the video description below. It's a bit of a long list this one, so let's get cracking. The first step is to prepare the cabbage. Trim the cabbage cores, but make sure the leaves don't fall off. Split the cabbage in half at the base and gently pull each side apart. Now clean the cabbage under some water and then sprinkle salt between the leaves. Try and make sure you get the salt everywhere. Do each leaf individually, make sure you get at all the folds and use more salt towards the base end of the cabbage. The salt is going to make sure most of the water is extracted out of the cabbage. Now we're going to let the cabbage rest for a total of 2 hours to give it time to draw the water out. But we need to turn them over every half an hour to make sure they're salted evenly. Meanwhile, let's prepare the other ingredients. Cut the radish into slices and then into matchsticks. The size of these matchsticks are really up to your own personal preference. Then we're going to do the same with the carrots. We like these to be a similar size to the radish, but again, this is really up to you. Remove any roots off the spring onion and then chop it up into small chunks. And then again, do the same with the chives. Put all of these vegetables together into a bowl. Now we're going to finely dice up our onions, garlic and ginger. Remove the skins off all of these and then cut them up. We're going to use a hand-powered food chopper to make things easier for ourselves, but you could just chop these up with a knife as well. If you're making a large amount of kimchi, you could also use a food processor for this step. This hand-powered chopper is one of the most used items in our kitchen. So useful! If you're interested in getting one, you can easily find something similar online if you search for a hand food chopper. Now let's get on to making the paste. Mix the water and the glutinous rice flour together in a pot and place over a medium heat. Stir continuously for about 10 minutes until it dissolves. Now add the sugar in and cook for another minute or so, stirring continuously. When it starts to boil, take it off the heat and let it cool completely. Kimchi usually contains a fermented shrimp paste called seyujot, but we're replacing it here with a Malaysian alternative called blachan. Just mix a little bit of blachan into 2 tablespoons of water and then add it into the paste. Now follow that up with the fish sauce. Time to add the gochugaru flakes. We like it on the spicier side, but you could reduce this to half a cup if you prefer it milder. Give the whole thing a good mix until it forms a paste. Now add the onion, garlic, ginger and all the chopped vegetables and mix the whole thing up until everything is well coated with the paste. The cabbage should be ready now, so give it a good wash under some cold water and then drain as much of the water as you can. At this point, the cabbage will be quite limp and it should be yellowish in colour. Put on some food safe gloves and then start mixing the kimchi paste into the cabbage. Make sure you're rubbing the paste into all the nooks and crannies. Really get it in there. You want all of the cabbage to be covered in it to make sure that it ferments well later on. Now wrap each cabbage section round itself and then store it in a glass container or a BPA-free plastic container. 
press the cabbage down in the container as well. Don't waste any of the leftover paste. Get it all in there. Now we're going to cover it and let it ferment. We leave it at room temperature overnight before putting it into the fridge for a few days. Three days later, this is how it looks. You'll find that there is a lot more liquid now in the container and if you press down on it, you'll see bubbles rising to the top. This is from the fermentation process and is perfectly fine. All that's left now is to cut out a portion, sprinkle some sesame seeds on and eat with some steaming hot rice. And that's the extent of our Korean. This kimchi keeps really well in the fridge. Now you'll find that more liquid leaches out of the cabbage over time. So whenever you use up any of the kimchi, remember to press down on what's left to make sure that most of it is submerged in the water. So in this video, we use gochugaru, which is Korean hot pepper. For kimchi, it's important to get the flakes and not the powdered version. You can adjust the spice level to your liking. Just add more gochugaru if you want it spicier. Now this recipe is really flexible. You don't like carrots or you don't have white radish, just leave it out. We also couldn't find Minari here, so we just didn't use that. Oh, and one really important tip, use gloves when handling the paste. That gochugaru will really sting if you're not used to it. Let us know in the comments below if you enjoyed using this recipe and let us know how you use your kimchi as well. So as always, we hope you're keeping safe and we'll see you in the next video. Annyeong! Annyeong!